I'm Steve Burchick, and our segment today is A Veteran's Voice. Our guest is Patrick Leary. Welcome, Patrick. Steve, thank you for having me today. Glad to have you. Uh, can you briefly describe your military experience? I uh, enlisted in the Army in 1966 and was fortunate to get a slot in flight school, so I became an Army aviator. Uh, flew for a year in Vietnam, flew helicopter gunships. Uh, and then spent two years over in Germany and uh, flew VIP units. So I got to travel Germany quite a bit in style. So Sounds pretty interesting. It was. What was one of your more interesting flights, uh, either in Vietnam or in Germany? I believe it was 1970. I was flying General Rogers and his staff. We were doing a, a tour of Belgium, going to NATO and uh, NATO headquarters. And uh, General Rogers got in the helicopter and he said, I want to take a tour of Belgium and I want to go see Waterloo. And I said, General, Waterloo is not on our flight plan and I have no idea where it is. And General Rogers said, son, take off, look for a hill, that's Waterloo. <laughs> so, so we took off, found the hill and we toured Waterloo. Oh, is that the only hill in uh, Belgium? That's the only hill in Belgium. Patrick, tell us about your civilian education or professional training. I got out of the Army, went to uh, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. Got an undergraduate degree in airport management with a, with a minor in applied math. Uh, went to work for an insurance company using the, uh, the minor in math skill, if you will. Uh, in that time, I went to uh, Drexel University got an MBA in quantitative analysis and um, finance, and uh, leveraged those skills. But then computers were a relatively new introduction to business. Was able to leverage those skills into uh, using computers to make schedules, to make logistic plans and so forth for several other companies besides the insurance company. I also understand you spent some time in the confectionery industry. Can you describe what you did there? Uh, I was a great part of my career. I worked for Russell Stover. Uh, throughout my career, I started my career, a uh, big career, with uh, Kenner Toys. And we did a lot of work over in uh, Asia at that time, sourcing you know, toys and, and packaging in Asia. Uh, ended my career with Russell Stover, again, working in Asia. Uh, all of Russell Stover's candy is, in fact, made in the U.S., but the packaging, particularly for... Um, Seasonal products, you know, the Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, uh, is made in Asia. So that was my responsibility to get the product made, to get it shipped over here. Can you, uh, uh, can you discuss your involvement with veteran service organizations? Um, looking for something to do. And I was very fortunate to stumble into uh, a number of veterans and found a really rich community of some really good guys um, that are still I think the phrase is, we're still citizen soldiers and we're still serving. How did you get started with the Vinson Orphanage? In uh, 1968, I was stationed in Pleiku. We had a company commander who I, I dearly appreciate, a guy named Bill Fraker, since passed away, who was adamant that on our off days that we would get to know the people that we're actually working and fighting for, the Vietnamese citizens. So he encouraged us strongly as only a major can to participate, uh, to help an orphanage that was right outside the, uh, the gates of Camp Holloway, orphanage called Tutam. So we go literally play with the kids. You know, we teach them baseball, teach them football. Uh, we brought food supplies when we could. We brought building supplies when we could. We helped them construct uh, buildings when we could. So we did that in 1968. It kind of became part of my Vietnam memories, if you will. Uh, one of my trips to Vietnam, to, to Asia, when I was working for Russell Stover, was to Vietnam to see if we could figure out some sourcing issues and source some product from Vietnam. I took time off uh, on that trip to go back up to Play Coup to see if I could, what I could see. And I, in fact, found Tu Tam. And I, in fact, found Sister Keat, who was Sister Keat back in 1968, and much younger. But she was there and still there. So uh, that kind of hit home. I had another tour guide who took me up to Kantum, and there was a much larger orphanage organization up in Kantum called uh, Vincent. 
And on the wall of one of the buildings was a plaque with uh, Mike Little's name on it and his phone number and email address. So when I got back to Kansas City, uh, I called Mike, introduced myself, and told him how impressed I was with some of the work and buildings that I had seen there. When I retired, I was fortunate to move to California. California is where the uh, headquarters is, if you will, of the Vinson Orphanage, Friends of Vinson. Uh, got involved in their board meetings and got reeled in real quick. Why are there still so many orphans this many years after the Vietnam War? Good, good question. We work in the area of the, called the Central Highlands. That's the home country, if you will, of a group of ethnic people called Mountain Yards. Okay. Uh, Mountain Yards are ethnically distinct uh, from Vietnamese. They're not the same culture, not the same um, G DNA, if you will. They are in the highlands of Vietnam, which is a rural area to begin with. And in Vietnam itself, it's still a third world country. Uh, particularly, particularly prenatal services. You know, a lot of these kids come from small villages. Uh, they, there are no doctors. There are seldom even a shaman to, to help them through things. So the birthing process is, is moderately difficult. You know, it, it, it's, I don't want to say the word primitive, but it's, it's old fashioned at best. So what tends to happen is, um, either, you know, when mom dies, dad can't take care of the child because dad has to has to go out and work and do some kind of some kind of work, or dad dies, uh, and mom is responsible, or they have three or four or five children, and although there is a mom and dad, they just can't afford three or four or five children, so they drop them off at the orphanage. So there's there's a, a whole host of reasons why kids wind up at the orphanage, primarily due because of the poverty level. So the bottom line is there's not much of a safety net there. There is no safety net there, right. Do you have any advice for veterans on the value of volunteering with a veterans group or a charitable organization? Uh, yeah, I, I do. Like I said before, when I joined the veterans group, I, I found people who had grown up with me. They shared the same experience I did when I was 21, 22 years old. And those value systems have stayed with me and have stayed with the guys who have joined the veterans groups as well. Uh, there are all kinds of activities that you can do that runs the gamut of supporting your community. Well, Patrick, thank you for joining us today. It's, it's been a real privilege chatting with you. It's hey, been my honor. Thank you very much, Steve. I appreciate it.